Sad story that hits home for many of us, including Dallas police officer, retired police officer Trey Penny, who joins us now. Uh, Trey, great to see you this morning. As you see the news, uh, you hear the latest, as do we. What do you make of this incident in Allen? Well, I'm extremely heartbroken by what happened in, uh, in Allen, Texas. Uh, but more, more on a personal note, uh, I had a friend, I received a call about 3.35 yesterday um, from him frantic. I mean, he's a police officer in another city, and he's calling me about his uh, daughter that's at the Allen Mall at the Presley shop, and they've barricaded themselves uh, along with 10 other people inside of a storage closet because they can, and he can hear the gunshots in the background. And he's, uh, he's frantic, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, I'm grabbing my gun, trying to shoot to the other side of town so we can get there. And uh, look, it, it was it was horrifying. It was horrifying for all of us. Um, and, and look, the, the bottom line is we cannot continue to allow this to happen. This is hitting home. There's no way we should be uh, constantly worried about these shooters uh, being able to attack us while we're out shopping and, and being with our families. That is not going to cut it. Uh, look, I know we've given a lot of credence to our uh, credence to our Second Amendment laws. I'm a, I'm, I'm a Second Amendment pro-gun right guy. But I will tell you, we cannot allow criminals to be running around here with guns, with body armor, and, and not who they are, know, know, who, know who they are. Um, look, we had officers that responded. Uh, I talked to a couple of officers. I mean, look, I, I don't know uh, people that have not, uh, police officers that have not worked a, a scene involving kids. Uh, There's one of the most tragic scenes to ever work that anyone could ever see. You don't lose that. So these officers are going to be dealing with mental health issues uh, for the foreseeable future when dealing with dead babies. And that can't happen anymore. I think it's time that we start looking at uh, mental health laws, start looking at, um, you know, gun protection laws. We got to do what we got to do uh, to make sure that the right people uh, have, the, have the guns. Uh, Trey, you know, so far police aren't saying much about the shooter. Who, they, they're saying he's not from that area, which could mean a lot of different things. Uh, do you have any sense... And, and to your point, I mean, when you talk about this is the thin line on it, it you can, you're a supporter of the Second Amendment. Now you're willing to look at different measures. What do you mean by that? Because it, it, mental illness is a real problem, uh, but we don't know anything about the mental state of this shooter uh, and whether or not they would have passed a background check as well. Absolutely. So, look, and that's, what, look, that's the fine line. You are, you're hitting it right on the nose. Background checks. We're going to have to. Look, I'm a police officer. I love my guns, but I don't want a person that's mentally ill running around outside of me with his gun. He starts shooting. I don't know he's. I don't know that he's critically un, that he's unstable at that time. He got the potential to take out me and my whole family. No way. We got to know who these people are. I've long argued uh, for looking at behavior. Right. We want to mitigate these risks. We we need to have. Uh, and, and, and you know what? We're going to find out once the FBI gets into his online data and they find out. Uh, what his pre-attack behaviors were, we're going to find out whether this person uh, announced his intention. And another part of that is when, when these attackers, they announce their intentions, they typically tell you what their motivations are, what their, uh, mm -hmm. what their grievances are, and what they're going to do. The problem with them posting this information online and through social media is that these companies have no mandate to communicate with law enforcement. So we need policies. The last two years, I've been testifying before the U.S. House Judiciary, testifying before the Senate Judiciary, trying to get them to do something to prevent these type of shooting attacks from happening. But nobody has moved, nobody has done anything, and that's why I'm going to be doing everything I can to protect this country from the inside. I'm going to be running for Congress to make sure that we are protecting our police and we are protecting our community. You know, Trey, I totally agree. I think everything needs to be on the table. And we, as citizens, deserve to know what are the motivations and the factors involved in mass shootings. For example, there's a manifesto that we, the public hasn't seen yet from a mass shooting against Christian children and adults at a Christian school in Tennessee. And for some reason, we still haven't, that still hasn't been released. I think we ought to look at the issue of fatherlessness. We also ought to look at weed. We know that cannabis um, increases psychology psychosis um, by five times. Um, so I think everything should be on the table, um, including including what you say, you know, maybe improving background checks. But thank God there was a guy with a gun there to take this guy down. Yeah. Look, I have, look, this is this is the other side of the defund the police movement. When you have police, police are able to respond, they're able to meet that aggression of the, of, the, of the suspect that's at the scene. So we have to have more police. We have to get more people more police officers funded, and we have to make sure that we are protecting these officers while we're funding 
uh, while, while we're trying to get them to come on to these departments. We can't have officers worried about facing criminal liability charges for use of force. We got to move away from that. And, and you just saw, you saw right after the George Floyd riots, uh, where, where a lot of police officers here in, here in Dallas, here in Austin, Texas, a lot of police officers start getting indicted for use of force. Um, we can't have that. We simply cannot have that because you're not going to have police wanting to come into this profession if they think that they're going to be prosecuted for doing their job. Trey Penny, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Trey. Thank you, Trey. Thank you for having me. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.